Hello everybody. Hello masters of your own destiny. How is everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I really do. Thank you for tuning in one more time here in my basement. Yes, I'm Francisco Suarez, your host, and this is From Suarez Basement, a podcast that we have created especially for everybody out there, but especially for students and faculties in the communication media and the art field. Like you know, at this point, our goal is to create bridges between you, the audience, and those experts in those uh, fields. Uh, people who are working behind the camera in some of your favorite television shows or in your favorite movies. And today, of course, we have a fantastic guest just waiting to have a conversation with us. This is David Mockness. He is a cinematographer or director of photography, if you want to call it that way, with an extensive career. He is now in The Wheel of Time, a television show in Amazon Prime, which I 100% recommend. You have to watch it, not to mention the cinematography is fantastic. He has worked in Little Weapons of Fox, The Trustee in ABC. I mean, you name it, he has done an extensive amount of work in cinematography. So I cannot wait to have this conversation with David Mockness. And thank you guys for tuning in. And of course, thank you to WCNY in Central New York for the partnership. And let's start this new episode. Here we go. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here in my basement uh, today. Because you see, people think that, you know, like, for people to say yes and taking the time, uh, it means a lot to us because that means that you believe in the power of education and how important this video podcast is for the students that are going to be watching. So thank you so much. Oh, oh my, my pleasure. It's, it's all about uh, giving back and uh, bringing up the next generation of filmmakers. So more than happy to, to chat. That uh, is so much appreciated. So let's, let's, let's uh, try to go back in time. Whoop. And suddenly you are in college or high school. How do you discover for all the people that listen out there and the students, of course, that you want to be in the film and television industry in the area of cinematography? I have to go back a little further than college and high school. (laughs) I was about uh, 11 years old and uh, myself and a couple of friends, we my, I knew my father had a eight millimeter camera, a super eight millimeter camera, and sort of asked if I could, you know, look at or use it. And we just sort of started making uh, our, our own films. And back then, uh, you know, we'd get one cartridge of super eight mm-hmm. and we'd have to take it down to the pharmacy to send off to be processed. And we get it back, uh, you know, a week or 10 days later at best and uh, turned on the projector and saw the results. And it, it kind of went from there, you know, and, and sort of started reading magazines and doing our own uh, little films and um, I got into editing with that a little bit. Uh, and then it was kind of funny because as the neighborhood, it was, we all got older, it was harder and harder to get neighborhood kids in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up starting getting into some plasticine animations, uh, you know, stop frame anima- animations. Um, and did that for a while and then ended up going to a uh, university for a year in a theater film program, uh, ran out of money and started knocking on doors in the film industry and uh, was very fortunate. That's fantastic. So I, I love this story because actually remind me very much of my own story. I used to, I guess, also nine, ten years old, I was already, you know, it's funny sometimes I say to my students, I was recording and they say what it means, you know, when I <laughs> yeah. use these gestures, well, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's our whole thing, you know, now yeah, you just yeah, press yeah, a button, yeah. but recording means this one at that time. Uh, yeah. Love it, love it. I create small yeah. uh, stories. So you were always, always clear that you would like to be in the, in, in the visual storytelling. Yes, I had no like um, immediate thoughts or desires to become a cinematographer, to be quite, quite honest. My whole goal uh, for many, many years was just to work in the industry. Like I was just fascinated by it. Um, I, I love theater as well, um, but, uh, you know, dabbled in that a little bit as, as a child. But but just, yeah, just sort of storytelling and visual storytelling and uh so for many years, or certainly early on, it was just a desire to work in the industry, whatever mm-hmm. capacity, just to observe it and learn it 
and experience it. Mm-hmm. And let's let's talk about cinematography and what that means because for a lot of the people that is watching or listening to the podcast, uh, you know, we talk about cinematography. Uh, right. What what is it? How you can define what cinematography is in the scales of visual storytelling? We know we have a director, we have a producer, we have a camera operator. We have what is the role of a cinematographer? Uh, I really think the. Um... <clears throat> the role and the, and the, the core of it is to um, visually tell that story and get the director's vision through the camera. You know, like it's a, uh, we, we work with, you know, directors, writers, producers, all the departments down, down the line. But when you think about it, the camera is the one thing that takes everyone's hard work and dedication and, sends it out at the end of the day or the end of the, the, the project and says, wow, look what we did. Look how fantastic and proud we should be of this. And so, you know, I'm very protective of, of the camera working with the camera because I, I feel that comes with a great responsibility as, as well. You know, like I take the work very seriously. I like to have fun, obviously, and everything like that. But when you think about it, all the hard work and dedication the actors do, production designer, costume designer, producers, writers, directors, props people, I could go on and on and on, but the camera and the work that we do with the camera takes everybody's hard work and combines it into the one package. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's really our goal as cinematographers to protect that and protect everybody in all those departments and get the best possible product we can get through the camera. And visual storytelling is obviously the key of that. Is that is a phrase that I hear sometimes that say that the, the camera is just a tool that the director used to tell the story, right? Is is without the camera, we don't have a visual storytelling, uh, which is a, a very, very important to understand. That's what I say to my students. Listen, this is not about just taking uh, uh a digital product or a, or a tool, you need to understand how this tool work and what the tool can do for you in order to create a visual storytelling. What is the relationship with you and the director in that sense? Because you have, well, you have worked in many, many projects. Uh, we are fascinated about your work, of course, in um, The Wheel of Time in Amazon. I'm fascinated with the show. We're going to talk a little more about that later. Uh, but what is that relationship with the director? Because each project is very different. And I'm assuming the director wants something very different visually from you. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's one of the complexities of, of working in, in television, in films as well, but in television, because, you know, the, the cinematographer is kind of a, a continuing um, visual uh, point on, on the show. We get rotating directors through um, and it, it, you know, each director brings his or her sort of um, own take on the story and the presentation of that story uh, visually and, and in, in every aspect. And as a cinematographer's goal, I think, is to keep um, uh, some consistency and to keep on, on the path. Um, that said, you know, I never want to handcuff directors too much because they might be bringing something, especially into a new show that we haven't you know, found ourselves and go, oh, that's really great for this character or that's really great for the show in general or in this environment or something like, like that. So I often do a lot of um, uh, image uh, searching with, with directors, sit down with them, talk about how they see that particular script, how they see the story, how they see the character's story, the character's journey throughout that, that piece, that episode. Uh, and then uh, a lot of image referencing, either from my own work or from other material online or other films and, and television pieces. And just to kind of get a full understanding and um, a collaboration between the two of us of give and take so that then we can approach the episode full on with a very distinct uh, collaborative uh, mm-hmm. place in mind. It can, it can be quite difficult. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can imagine, I, I'm sure you have very um, amazing and pleasant experience with directors, but it could be also a very challenging thing when you as a cinematographer, you know, have your own vision or concept, especially if you've been working in a show for so long and suddenly here come this new director, which happened a lot in television, and mm-hmm. you feel 
mm, I don't know if that is a place or the or the you know that the, the direction mm. we should go. How how you balance that relationship with the director? Uh, for me, it's really communication. Just mm -hmm. having conversations and talking openly about. Uh, Uh, why they feel strongly about a particular situation or moment uh, or why I feel strongly um, in, in my view with regards to something. So it's just a lot of conversation, a lot of dialogue, just being very open with the directors. Um, and again, going back and referencing material, you know, you know, it's still true. A picture says a thousand words. So, you know, if you're having trouble expressing something or having trouble getting on the, the same page or, or, or something, you know, to see a visual of a, a, a piece of artwork or a still frame from, from something um, to go like, yeah, like, like that, that sort of tone, that sort of texture, whatever it might be. And then it just builds upon that. So it's just really uh, a lot of conversations, a lot of uh, dialogue And uh, just sort of being open, you know, mm -hmm. just sort of being open, knowing that we're in it together. Um, I'm not going it from my own perspective. They're not doing it from their own perspective, but from a collaborative point of view, because that's what's best for the overall uh, project and the show, you know, is to keep it collaborative. For sure. Uh, we talk about your relationship with the director, of course, but as a cinematographer, me and the person who say, this is a shot, this is what we want to accomplish. What is the relationship? What is with you, cinematographer, with what it is in front of the camera. I mean, set designers, costume designers, every, everything that composed that specific frame, what is your relationship with, with that component? Um, well, working with production designers and costume designers, obviously very, very closely. Um, I mean, I have to say on the wheel of time, um, oh my gosh, um, Andre Nevisil was the most amazing production designer ever. And we had great communication and great collaborative uh, work with Andre and his team. And they did a fantastic thing. We would have a lot of discussions. And of course he would have his own discussions with the producers and the showrunner and writers and uh, director. And we were able to, they were able to put together some great um, concept art, which was really a good starting platform to keep everybody on the same page. And then that goes into costume design as well. And that got built into the, the concept art. So we could really talk about uh, tones and textures and what the set would be. And then I could translate that through the viewfinder, for example, with the director, uh, you know, to get my idea across as to how to visually tell that story uh, with the camera. Um, and then it goes into blocking, of course, with all those things already, you know, somewhat discussed in, in mind. So it starts to lead to blocking a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I just keep coming back around to the same thing, communication and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Really, it really is that. But, yeah, a lot of conversation with production design, a lot of conversation with costumes, of course, uh, props. Uh, all the departments, but uh, those real key ones for sure. So now that you, you of course, bro, uh, the wheel of time, which I'm, uh, well, I'm fascinated about the story itself, uh, but I'm fascinated because I, I always say to my students that if somebody asks you in what business are you in, you should say in the business of make-believe, right? Is the idea that whatever we watch in that screen should feel real should should have this component of reality the dragon doesn't feel real you lose me as a viewer right, right. um and in the case of uh, the wheel of time everything is so spot uh from costume design and the story and the acting so a show like this one i'm trying to now with the new technology that you know we are able to to do how much is real how much is blue screen or green screen I, of course you don't need to give me a specific percent but you know we we are in moments where i am watching saying will that actually be real or is an actual set um how that work how is that dynamic uh in wheel of time i think you'd be surprised at how much of it was practical <clears throat> oh wow certainly with certainly with regards to the sets i mean again our production designer and construction team just fantastic elaborate sets and, and the craftsmanship was just off the charts like it was such a good uh, starting place for a cinematographer you could shoot everything and you could shoot everything up close and in detail because it was so fantastic 
Um, that said, we certainly had we had visual effects for um, some of the bigger set extensions and some of the landscape extensions and stuff uh, along those lines. But uh, I think you'd be surprised at how much was actually practical in, in Wheel of Time. Um, and again, it goes back to the uh, production and art, art teams, construction teams. It was fantastic. That is yeah. fantastic. Good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's such an amazing show. And I, I just love what you're doing because, again, I, I, I check, of course, your, your resume and your, you have been building this amazing career, which is fascinating. Do you think at some point you would like to uh, be as a director? Is something that you feel uh, will, will come in your future or you are much into in the cinematography aspect? Well, I certainly really enjoyed being a cinematographer without a doubt. And, and I think it's just uh, never ending in terms of learning and, and growing. I, I did direct one episode of a series fringe that I did some, some years ago, and that was a wonderful opportunity. And I think it went pretty well. Uh, and I certainly enjoyed it. And it really gave me great insight to um, speaking with actors more directly about their character and certain situations and kind of understanding their mindset in, in terms of a, perhaps an approach to a, a scene or a moment in, in the script. So even from that one experience, I, I think that I've I got a vast amount of knowledge on that and can really mm. hopefully understand a little bit more how the actors are uh, approaching a particular piece or be able to recognize when something's not quite feeling right to them. And then maybe I can offer up something on our end to make them a bit more comfortable and, and um, more appropriate for them for, the, for that moment. Uh, but I, I love being a cinematographer. I'm very fortunate to, to be able to do it. And uh, yeah, I just enjoy it. You know, it's great. It's great you, working with so many people. And right. And David, when you go the Wheel of Time, you got a script, you read it. What do you thought and um, what, what caused your attention about the show? Uh, just the, the, I mean, I had heard of Wheel of Time, but I had not read the books, to be quite honest, when, mm -hmm. uh, when I entered in, in, into this. But um, uh, I, I got the, the script, or the, the first pieces, and it was really, really good. It, it grabbed me right away. It was super interesting. And uh, my wife and I were on a bit of a road trip and we immediately downloaded the audio books and put it on the car when we were, we were driving. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was fantastic because I got hours and hours and hours right. and, 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 and just enjoyed it and then went back to the scripts and then went back to the discussions about, about the show. But uh, yeah, I was just intrigued uh, uh, about it. I thought it was really well written. I thought it was interesting. I, I really liked the idea of the uh, female characters being strong and, and uh, that whole uh, notion uh, was, was great. So, uh, and then when they started to put the cast, I was on board when they, you know, the cast was coming online and just phenomenal, phenomenal mm -hmm. cast. We were very blessed to have them. Fantastic. Well, David, I have a, a final question because again, time goes super fast and I could be here. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, I have my coffee and good company so I could be here talking to you the entire and day. And I could ramble off for a long time <laughs> about, you know, but film um, and television and cinematography and everything in between. So let's talk about before, you know, we wrap up a digital era on demand in Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. You have been in the industry for almost 30 years plus and what is the difference of 20 years ago? Where do you think the industry going? What are the opportunities for the new generation? Because I, I do talk in my class a lot to my students that teach script writing for television. And I say to them, listen, you are living in the second golden era of television, really. Because yeah. before the past was so narrow in order for you to really get to that NBC or CBS or, but now, is hunting season. Everybody's looking for new contents, new, that doesn't mean that what is out there is necessarily good, uh, but definitely all these new stream media are looking for new content. How you seeing the evolution now that we are in these moments or also in compared with what you were maybe 20 years ago? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough to know. I mean, things are moving so fast uh, and, and changing all the time. 
Uh, it's certainly different, but I agree. I think we're into this this new era of, of uh, film and television. I think this is the road that it's going to run down. Um, it'll, you know, expand and grow and morph and change as it does. But one thing that I think is an incredible opportunity for filmmakers, young filmmakers today, is the opportunity to get your material out there. Like when, when I was starting, even, you know, you know, if you if you shot something, you film and you wanted to get people to see it. I mean, you literally had to rent a church basement or put a bed sheet up in somebody's you know backyard or something, rent a projector, staple some flyers onto telephone poles trying to get an audience. Now, online and the digital era, it's, you know, a, a lot more convenient, let's say, to get your work out there. And I think that's important for everyone to understand, like good or bad, you can argue about that because it's so subjective. Everyone's going to like something or not like, like something. I think it's important to get your work out there um, because that keeps you working, keeps you exploring, um, getting, you know, working with your ideas. Not everyone will catch, not everyone will be a paying gig necessarily. But I think that's the, the most fascinating thing these days is the opportunity to get present your work, to get your material out there for everyone to see. You know, if we can make, uh, for example, with this final statement, uh, give the students a, a sense of hope and reality, of course, uh, of what is happening, what would be that final thought, that final message to the students? I think it, the message would be to be, be cautious, to be aware of it. I don't think you have to be paranoid of it, but I think put in proper procedures and protocols and it will change your shooting dynamic and your production schedule dynamic a little bit, but just work that into the, into the mix with the, uh, the obvious prime thing is keeping everybody safe, but you put that in, you get everybody on board to adhere to the same things and work safely and point out something when they think it's not right you can, can continue and carry on and, and it, it's great. And you'll find that once you get into a, a rhythm, you can work that into your game and you'll be fine. So it's, um, I think it's really about having those procedures and protocols, following them and just working it into your production um, schedule mm -hmm. and, and game a little bit. Uh, but the upside of all of that is, okay, that's annoying or whatever you want to call it, but you can continue to work and you can continue to produce uh, good projects for people to watch and I think that's what we really want to do ultimately is, is entertain and, and give people something that they can uh, enjoy. David, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, my pleasure. No, the time. Please keep yourself safe and the family and this is well your house and hopefully it will be the, another, the last of many that we can have these conversations. I would love to chat again anytime. It's awesome. Perfect, David. Thank you so much and uh, good luck with everything, okay? Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much. Okay, Take bye care. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.